Hi everyone, I'm Shira. I am here with Zhuzhi, Kim, Lee, and Taris. We are five friends, speakers, and professionals from different cultures, backgrounds, and age groups. We are here to offer healing and inspiration. We're continuing our conversation with Taris and her journey from darkness to light. Taris, you've been through a lot of darkness. And we girls were just talking about the fact that you kind of want to fit it all in, all of your stories, but we want to stay focused. And when we left off last, you were telling us another story about the darkness. So please continue. Okay, yeah. I think one of the um, highlights of my life and darkness was accepting relationships that did not serve me well. Um, so I was in very abusive relationships, uh, mentally, physically. Um, you know, I allowed a man to put his hands on me. Um, no big deal. Um, I allowed a man to, um, you know, talk down to me, um, say very degrading things, um, because of how I chose to live my life, um, which I did not make a lot of very good decisions at all. Um, you know, when you are struggling trying to find yourself, um, and let's just say abusing, whether it's drugs or alcohol or gambling or whatever, um, you know, you could go and do a, a couple of dark things, right? So, you know, maybe there was quite a few issues, um, or I'm sorry, uh, in times that I, um, you know, would become intimate with people who just weren't worth it. They weren't worth my time. Like, you know, whether they were, you know, losers or just not to my deeper level, um, those are bad choices. I mean, at least for me, they were, um, you know, also making all of these bad choices, I was, um, abused, um, sexually, um, because I chose to put myself in a bad situation, not once, not twice, but three separate occasions. Um, and that could burn your soul. Um, because again, you have the choice on certain um, situations that you choose to put yourself in. And I chose unhealthy, wrong um, paths. But Taris, it probably didn't feel like a choice when you were doing it because a lot of times when we have these negative experiences, it's because of how we're seeing ourselves. So do you think a lot of it was subconscious? It's not like you're sitting there going, I'm gonna choose a bad relationship right now. Yeah, you know what I mean? I, I, think, I think that that's a really fine line question. Like before you go out and I'm just, you know, going to be blunt and, and this is no hard feelings to anybody out there that's listening, but before you go out drinking with your friends, you have the choice of how much you're going to drink, right? We are responsible for ourselves and what we're going to consume in alcohol or drugs or anything. And we also have the choice on who we're surrounding ourselves with and who we're going out with, right? So you choose your friends. Do not go out with friends that do not have your best interest at hand. Um, because if you go out with friends that don't care about you and you get hooked up with, let's just say some guy, um, and, and they're not watching out for you. Yeah. I, I mean, I believe it's kind of sort of a choice. We all maybe want to like live in our fantasy world and, you know, go out and be like, Oh my God, I just met the greatest guy. And you know, we're going to go home together and you know, whatever the case may be, just be smart about things that you're doing especially when you're a teenager like we don't fall in love that quickly girls when we're a fucking TJ, teenager we right. don't and sometimes even in our early 20s and lee i know that you want to say something but like we're fucking dumb when we're young girls like i'm sorry we are um and i i just think <laughs> right i mean you're laughing but it's true we don't know it i'm <laughs> real dumb <laughs> I mean, I'm not anymore. I, I'm on a different level. But I mean, how many stupid things have you done when All you're. Right, so stick with the darkness, Sarah. Yeah. Stick with your story. Sorry, well, Lee. Yeah, to... And it's not just the darkness, but you know how, like you said, we have choices, and certainly we do. And at a, any age, every age. And yes, when we are younger, we may not even realize that this is necessarily a choice, that we get to choose these things. But for you back then, obviously, so you made some bad choices. And what is it that you were seeking at that time that let you fall into that? I was just lost. 
I was, I was depressed. I was, I mean, there was points of my life where I was like almost suicidal. Like I didn't want to be here. I didn't want to be here. I had, I had no reason to be here. Wow. Was there anything that made you feel good? Going out and partying was fun. Like, it was fun. You didn't think about anything. You're just like, woohoo, yeah, let's dance. Like, I love dancing. I love to go out and dance and not think. Right. Yeah, so that kind of probably numbed you. I'm sorry, Kim. Yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. I was just going to say you were self medicating. So, self medication always feels yeah. good, but yeah. it's not good for us. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, when I left high school, um, and my high school wasn't, it wasn't that bad. I was a normal girl, right? I mean, people saw me. I was a normal, a normal girl. I wasn't troubled or anything like that. I mean, I was in the cool cliques and, you know, I had a really great boyfriend when I was in high school that like I was obsessed with for, you know, two years before we even dated. Like I was a normal teenage girl. I did well in school, um, the whole thing. But when I, when I left high school and I went to go veer off on my own, I moved to Florida to go to, high, to, go to college. And um, I was there for about two years. I came back with three credits. Like I dropped out of school. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just was, I was lost. I was just totally freaking lost. I didn't have any guidance. I was a wild child, um, you know, when I finally came back to New York after Florida, I think that I finally started to understand, like, you better freaking rein yourself in, girl, because if you don't, this is not going to be happy times. Um, so thank God that I did that. Um, I, I, I did, you know, put myself back into school. Um, not for what I'm doing right now. I definitely had four career changes, but um, I put myself back into school. I actually winded up going in partners um, in a restaurant. I bought a restaurant when I was young, about 22, 23 years old, wow. uh, with really bad people, actually. Um, and I got fucked out of a lot of money. Um, and I was involved with a married man also at the time, which I'm ashamed of. And, and you know, I think that that's probably one of the worst things you could do on this planet today. Um, there's enough men out there. Ladies, go get your own. <laughs> just saying. Amen. I, listen, been there, done it. I can say it. Um, but um, yeah, I mean that that in and of itself is also dark, right? You know, like why why did I not love myself enough that I felt I could go be with some someone else's available? Yeah, you know, it's not okay. Um, Harris, yeah, it, it just sent, it just. You know, between the first episode where you were telling us about all of the loss you've experienced when you were young and everything, it just sounds to me like you really didn't have enough love growing up, period. Like, would you say that, would you say that like one of the things you were looking for, like to be taken care of, to be loved? Because back then you didn't know how to love yourself. Like you, you were like looking in all the wrong places, the wrong men, drugs, alcohol, you know, all these terrible relationships. Like, would you say, would you agree? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think love is so important, right? And it's what we all need. Um, and it's what brought all of us together. Um, so yeah, I definitely think I was lacking love um, because when I felt love with my friend's family, um, that was like all I needed. You know what I mean? When I felt that love, when I got that love, I was like, wow, this is all, this is all I need. So yeah. But what age did you experience that love? I'm just trying to make a connection here because I know you said you made it to college, which I'm really impressed being that you didn't have people taking care of you in your home, that you even made it that far. So like, yeah. at what point were you living with this family, this for your friend's family? I mean, I, they, I really had the strong connection with them when I was 13, 14 years old is really when it, when it built and then all through high school. And then after that, and, and that's then when probably did you move in with that? But I, but I still, I didn't, you know, I didn't know how to deal or connect all of the emotions, right? Like you have all the stuff that you're dealing with your whole entire life um, that is, you know, negative or unhealthy. Like I also didn't know what I know now that I lived with a lot of negative energy and I'm a very um, energy driven person and I didn't know how to handle that. Okay, so I think that in, in my mind, I was always like, I can't be here. I can't be here because I can't deal with 
what is going on in my house. I didn't know what it was at the time. I only knew I didn't want to be there. I didn't like it. I didn't feel comfortable. But I didn't know how to express that, nor was I taught how to express that. Right. Yeah. Tabs, when did you move in with the other family? I didn't. Okay. So I, when I moved in, that was a long time ago. That was like after I had my kid. So, oh, I mean, okay. there was so much more that had happened um, before that. But, I mean, was I with them all the time? Yeah, I did all my holidays with them. I did a lot, like, you know, Christmas Eve and stuff like that. I did big holidays with them because, again, I didn't want to be with my family. Well, you were also going to start taking us down the path. You, you were talking about parallels between losing your father, some of the bad relationships, and then your husband your marriage situation. So were you yeah. going to down so, that road? So when I, this is actually kind of sort of funny and weird. And, but when I was um, partners in the restaurant and um, just not going down a good path with that either, uh, my, it was 9-11 actually. And my uh, husband had just gone to a funeral or something for 9-11 and him and a whole bunch of people um, came into this bar that I was working at. And, um, that's how I met him. And he was actually my saving grace. Um, I believe God sent me him um, to get me out of the situation that I was in and um, with, with the abusive relationships. And I was in a triangle relationship too with the married guy. I was also in an abusive relationship, um, which was awful. Um, but at yeah. the same time? What? At the same time? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I met my husband and I really thought that like he was my savior I was like oh my god he's gonna get me out of all this stuff and at this time like I had already connected with a higher being of myself I was in my early 20s and I was like you know what all this drinking and all this shit like the partying like it's not for me this is not the life I, this is not the life I want. Like, I want to be happy. I want to have what I didn't have. I want to have a family. You know, I want to finish school. You know, so like I had dreams, I had aspirations and I wanted to fill those. So um, I was on like, even though it was, a, I was still, I was still in darkness. I was still on a better path. And um, I really truly believed that he was taking me out and, and getting me there, helping me get there. And um, I mean, it's a long, sad story, but it turned out that he had a very bad drug problem um, for many, many years. Um, I didn't really know how serious it was, um, but we did wind up having a baby. He was clean for quite some time. Um, I wasn't sure where I was going with him. I wasn't sure if he was the man I wanted to marry, um, but I did get pregnant. I didn't know it, you know, if I should have the kid. I think I was 24 by this time, and I was like, oh, my God. You know, I'm here with this guy who's possibly or is unstable. He may go down a really bad path again. Um, you know, I'm still in school. I don't have a secure job. I don't have crazy money backing me. I just lost over $70,000 because I invested in this fucking restaurant with this guy that like fucking destroyed me. Um, and I just, again, just went to God. And I was like, God, I need help. Like, you need to give me a, an answer. What am I doing here with my life? And this was probably the most impactful days ever in my whole entire life. When I had the next day after talking to God, went to my mailbox and I opened it up and there was this big, huge postcard of a baby's face on it with my name addressed. Um, and the postcard was from Babies R Us. I've never in my life gone to Babies R Us. I was 24 years wow. old. I never bought a present at a baby store for anybody. Um, there was no connection I had to the store, but that baby's face on that card with my name on it was my message from God that I needed to have that child. And whatever it was that I needed to do to move forward, I would figure it out. So we had a baby and that baby is now 16 years old and amazing and in um you know i guess um raising him 
I did wind up raising him a single mom. Um, I did split up from my husband. He um, unfortunately passed away of a drug overdose when my son was eight years old. So that was very hard for me because I had to relive my father's death and watch my son go through the same thing. Um, that was fucked up for a couple of years. Like I had lost it again. I went into a serious depression. I did not think I was capable to finish raising my son. I was looking for anyone to possibly just help me because I just didn't know if I could be here anymore. Like, I mean, it was, it was just a very uphill battle for me back and forth. Um, you know, not a lot of people know this, but two weeks before my husband passed away, he had called me asking for help again, like he always did. And um, I don't know if you've ever been in an abusive relationship with someone who is a drug addict, but it's um, a very um, painful experience um, to watch someone that you love and who's the father of your son destroy their life. Um, and I got to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it anymore. And two weeks before he passed away, he called me and he said, I really need your help. Um, you need to help me. You have to have to help me. And I was just so furious with all of it. Cause I couldn't understand why he couldn't get it together. I mean, look at me. I went out, I partied. I had a good fucking time. Look at me. I got my degree. I started building myself a great career. Like you could turn this shit around. I know you can like just change your mindset. And I just told him to fuck off. Like I was done. And two weeks later he died. And that was the last words I ever said to him. And that is probably one of the hardest things I'll ever have to live with in my life. Um, and, and through that, you know, I had a, I, I relived my, with that, I relived my, my father's death. So. Wow. That was rough for me. Wow. Harris, do you feel like to whatever degree you're, you see how you've broken this cycle? Cause it's like, when you tell these stories, like eight years later and knowing you now, like I haven't known you that long, but it feels like you're a different person than that person. And, you know, I've seen you with your son. You guys are very connected to each other and you care very deeply about his emotional needs and you're very honest with him in your communication. So do you feel like that cycle is broken? I think the understand, the cycle is broken with understanding. I get it now. And what I get is we are not in control of what happens. Um, I am a really big, huge believer that, that God is in control and he gives us what we can handle, as I said earlier, and our plan is to get through it because there's a bigger plan. And, you know, I don't think I'm ever gonna go down a really dark path again. I don't think, I know, I will never be depressed again. And I know I would never in a million years think of, you know, not being here like this planet is amazing the life that i've chosen myself for, for myself is amazing i only have the most amazing things happening to me now um, i'm connecting with so many great people um that i think are literally going to change the world i mean look at you girls look at what we do i mean we're we're spreading so much positive energy out there in the world right now I, I can't imagine anything can pull me down. Well, hey, Taris, just on a closing note, because this has been so, um, it, it's been so dark for you over and over again. And, and I, I, I'm kind of hearing a theme of relationships, right? The terrible relationships, the, the loneliness, the void, the lack of all of the things that you lacked, actually. Um, so what have you done differently or what, what have, have you done to implement into your relationship now with your own son, raising him and, and bringing him up in this world to make it different, very different, obviously, for him? 
Um, communication. Um, I just think talking. Like, let's talk about what we're going through. Let's talk about our feelings. Let's just know that we're not perfect and the world is not perfect. And we need to understand and know that there's tools out there that can help us um, and just trying to use them. You know, I mean, I hate to say it's just that simple, but I, I feel like it's just that simple. Just communication, talking, tell people, tell your family, tell your kids, um, you know, how you feel, how things make you feel and that you'll get through it. And you know what? You may not be happy with the outcome or, you know, or the choice or, um, you know, the decision that someone wants for themselves or for you. But if you talk about it, I, I really think that, you know, with understanding people around you that you could get through pretty much anything. Yeah. And that's huge. Some family you wanted to, sorry, Kim, you wanted to, you wanted to say something I saw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Paris. Um, sorry. You're, um, <sighs> Oh, how to cry, Kim. Seriously. Oh, you <laughs> so unbelievable. You can't cry. Don't cry. Please don't cry. Excuse me, were you just not talking about knowing and understanding your feelings? I know. <laughs> Hello? There's something, uh, there's something in Terrace's uh, journey that's like hitting me really hard right now. And that's that um, my niece and nephew lost their dad three years ago. And they were only 12 and 14 at the time. And I'm just, I'm just praying that they don't go through some of these things that you're that you went through um and of course as an aunt i'll do my best to be there for them as much as i possibly can but i was just wondering um you know if you can just go back to your 12 year old self for a second and um sorry i just want to know <laughs> It's okay, man. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. This is hard stuff, man. This is hard. I just want <laughs> to has a big smile on her face. There's not. I just want to know, like, There's as a twelve-year-old, what could somebody have? How could someone have? What could someone have said to you that would have helped back then, with the loss? If someone would have hugged me and yeah. told me everything is going to be okay, I think that would have been a game changer. Wow. It's yeah. so simple, isn't it? It's and in how many situations simple. in life can we put that exact thing in, right? Take that into so many situations in life that could really set us on a whole different path in our hearts with situations it really all comes down to love like all of it at the end of the day everything is just about giving each other love right so powerful so um girls i think we're gonna wrap it up but i just wanted to say one thing and that is that tara when you started <laughs> <laughs> we're going from the darkness to the light this is, this is actually very enlightening hearing your story is just so impactful and but i wanted i needed to share one last thing and that is that when you first were talking about how you just gotta keep going you just gotta you just gotta do it you just gotta keep plugging along and when you were saying that, I was like, you know, Taris, you really need to like sit with your feelings and like own it and feel it and the whole thing. But I'm realizing now through hearing your story that that is what got you through. And it's like, you've had so many breakthroughs and ahas and now you're teaching other people how to do that. So it's like, I'm almost like my hat's off to you about yes, you know, yes, you have to stop and feel the pain, yeah. but your tenacity and your determination to get to a better place has gotten you where you are today and you are role modeling for your for your for christian like 
like you can't even believe. I'm just so proud of you. I really am. Thank you. And I am going to tell you, I did, I know we're going to wrap this up, but I did go through a lot of counseling um, just to find my way. I mean, different types of energy healing and people to talk to, good groups of people to surround myself with, mm -hmm. eliminating toxic energy from my life. I mean, there's just so much more that I put into it than just my mindset. Yeah. Yeah. You probably feel like you've lived like two lifetimes, right? Yeah. Well, it's time to wrap up this episode. Taris, thank you so much for sharing your unbelievable journey with us. It's so many beautiful life lessons in there. And I know people who are watching will benefit from it. So if you like our videos, please subscribe and let us know if you have any topics that you want us to cover by commenting below. We'll see you all soon. Stay safe out there and stay healthy. We love you.